It is December and we have the fourth advent calendar door today and obviously we're going to deal with something like this. This is a UI label that is enabled to be a counting label. So we're going to create a subclass of UI label today that will enable just the behavior you have just seen. So let's get started. We're going to create a new Xcode project. Um, let's choose a single view application. I am calling it counting label and I'm going to create it on my desktop. Let me just make my window a little bigger and then we're going to start. So obviously a label is a pretty simple UI component. You will find it of course in the um, uh, in the object library in Xcode in interface builder. Uh, but the label by itself is not able to count. And sometimes you want for a situation like um, you want to count all of the photos that your users have in their photo library, or you want to count all of the posts that your users made or whatever you like. So you have plenty of use cases maybe for a counting label. And we're giving this ability now to the standard UI label by just creating a subclass class. So I'm pressing command and on my keyboard, I'm choosing the Coco touch class. I'm going to call that counting label. And this is going to be a subclass of UI label so that we get all of the behavior and all of the functions of a UI label. And here we have our subclass we are inheriting from UI label and what we can directly do is go into our storyboard, selecting our label here and choose our counting label as a custom class in the identity inspector. So I'm entering counting label right here. And at the moment, this label isn't able to do anything else but a UI label, but this is something we're going to change right now. So let's open up the counting label.swift file and remove the template code here. We don't need that. And then we can start with our class implementation. And first of all, we're going to need some properties. So I'm starting off with a start number where we're starting our counting. And this is going to be of type float and I'm defining that it um, that way with explicit typing so that we can work always with floats in our case. And we also define a end number, also a float and we're initializing it here directly. Then what we also need is a progress, which is a time interval. And we're also going to need a duration for the animation duration, if you wanted to put that way. And we also need a last update property, which is also a time interval. And we're going to need the last update property to know when or to calculate later when our animation is finished because we're using a timer for that. So let's also create a timer property. This is going to be optional so that we can set it to nil later to invalidate the timer. And then what we also need is of course a function that can be called to start our counting animation. So I'm sim simply calling this function count and then we are going to have a from value, which is a float and we're going to need a two value. So I'm going to uh, write a two description and a two value, which is also a float. We have a duration, so another description with duration. This is a time interval. We're going to have an animation type so that we can decide if we want our counting to ease in or ease out or to be linear. And let's simply add and animation type here, which is going to give us an animation and the animation type, which is going to be off type counter animation type. And obviously we haven't defined that yet, but we're going to do that in a second. And we are also going to have a counting type. So we can decide if we want to count with integers or with floats. So again, we have a counter type here, or count and counter type, counter type, not counting type. And then this is going to be off type counter type. All right. So this is going to be our function, our main function here that we're going to use. And obviously we have to define the counter animation type and the counter type. And we're going to do that with two enumerations. So we have an enumeration 
um, let's call that counter animation type and I'm simply copying that here pasting it right there and then we're having three cases we have linear we have the case ease in and we have the case ease out and then what we also need is a counter type so again with enumeration counter type and we will have an integer and a float and with that we have all of the types that we need and we can actually start with our count function and what we want to do first is actually initializing all of our properties here since we do not have an init function for that so we're starting with self.start number we are setting that to the from value. We have self and number. This is the to value with self duration, which is the duration from our function. We have the counter type, which we do not have yet. So let's also create that. So we have our timer and we also need to know what counter type we actually have. So let's create two properties for that. We have a counter type property, which is type counter type and we have a counter animation type counter animation type and with that we can now initialize that so we start with the counter type which is counter type and we have counter animation type which is the animation type and then we can set the progress to zero and the last update of our timer is going to be date and time interval not data but date time interval since reference date with which is uh, january 1st 2001 and then what we need to do actually is to create another function that is going to be responsible to update our values and to work hand in hand with the timer and that timer is going to call a specific update function every hundredth of a second. And let's add this update function right here below our count function. I'm going to call it update value. We don't need any parameters here, but what we need is a now constant that gets the current time interval since, these, uh, since this reference date. And then we calculate the progress of our count animation by taking the current progress and adding the difference between now and the last update. And with that, we get the progress and then we set the last update to now. And with that, we can efficiently deal with our timer and we know when we can actually invalidate the timer. So we uh, add an if statement here with the progress and if the progress is greater or equal to the duration, then we know that we can actually invalidate the timer. So let's call another function here, invalidate, invalidate timer that we're going to create. And then we set the progress to the duration and then later we can update our text in label right here and this means that we can also add our function invalidate timer let's do that at the end function invalidate timer and therefore we use our timer and invalidate it and then we also set this to nil and this also means that we have to create a timer somewhere and this is something we should do in our count function and since we could call the count function multiple times what we also should do is before creating a new timer we should call the invalidate timer function and then we can create our timer by using the timer class then we use schedule a timer with a time interval with a target a selector and so on so the time interval is going to be a hundredth of a second target is self and then we call our update value function every time the timer fires that function so we're using a selector here using our selector keyword and then we use the counting label class counting label and call the update value function we don't need a user info but we want our timer to repeat until we invalidate it and we left one space blank here we wanted to update the text in our label and how are we actually going to do that well we're adding another function which we're calling update text 
And this is going to get a value argument, which is of type float, since we're always working with floats here. And then we can switch through our counter type and later call this function. And if we switch through the counter type, counter type, then we have to unwrap this. And then we have our first case, which is an integer. And we do not need a default case, but we need a float case. So these are our two cases. And all we need to do is use self.text, which accesses the standard text property of a UI label. And since we are inheriting from UI label, that's not a big deal. And if we want to display integers, all we need to do is using string interpolation and casting our value to an integer. And all that's all we need to do here. And for a float, we use self.text again. We're not simply adding a string and uh, use string interpolation to add a value. We're using string with a format since we also want to display decimals. And therefore we use the format percent dot to f, which tells the format or the value that we add here that we want to insert our value here with two decimals. And that is our update text function. And since we're just dealing with updating, let's also add the last update function, which is going to be the update counter function, which uses a counter value, which is a float and also returns a float. And we're doing this because we have three animation types. Actually, we have linear, which would be something like a linear equation, like um, f of x equals x. Uh, we have ease in, which would be something like a power function like this. So this would be the easing in. And this is a function like a, or a power function with f of x equals x to the power of three. And here we have an ease out function, which would look something like this, which kind of slows down. Um, when it starts reaching the x intercept. And this would be a function like um, one, one minus x to the power of three. And actually, this exponent is going to be responsible for the velocity. So let's create a counter velocity constant here, which is also going to be a float. And this is going to be three point zero. So this is going to be our exponent here for our function. And this is what we are going to use. And therefore, we scroll down here a little. And we create our update counter functions. So we switch through the counter animation type. And let's simply remove the default here. And we're starting with the case linear. And since we're um, returning what we're getting in, we simply add return counter, the current counter value, and we're done with the linear animation type. Now let's see what we have to do for the ease in. So here we return a power function. So we use power and we want this to be a float. So we use power f. And this is the base count is our counter value. And the exponent is three, just as we've seen earlier. And, and we do not want to return counter type, we want to return counter value here. And for ease out, we have the ease out case. And here again, we want to use our power function with the float type. And this time we use 1.0 minus our counter value to the power of three or actually we also defined our counter velocity here as a constant. So let me also replace that here. So we have the counter velocity. And to make sure that the sign is correct, we add 1.0 minus our function here to get the correct ease out uh, coefficient actually that we're going to use um, in a second. So now we have created our update counter function, we have created our update text function, and we have created our update value function where we still have to call our update text function. But what we still need is the current counter value, which we have to uh, calculate or we have to use at least a computed property for that. So we add that property right above our count function and I'm going to call that current counter value. And this is going to be of type float. And then we add some curly braces to add our code here. 
And first we can check if we have actually reached the end of our counting animation. So we check if the progress is greater or equal to the duration, then all we have to do is return the end number. And in any other case, what we want to do is calculate the percentage with float and we use the progress and divide it by the duration. And then we're going to use for our updated or for our update counter return type, which is our update um, constant here. And here we simply call now the update um, update counter function and pass along our percentage. And this gives us a coefficient that we can use for the current counter value. So we use the start number and then we add our update coefficient. So update times the end number minus the start number. And this enables us to have those uh, different animation times, linear ease in and ease out. And now we can actually call our update text function here in the update value function. And therefore, we simply use update text. And then for the value, we use the current counter value, which is, as you know, a computed property. And that's almost everything we need to do. The only thing we should also consider is what happens if we have no animation because the duration, for example, is set to zero. Then we check if the duration is equal to zero and then we set update text to the to value and we return from our function with, without doing anything else. And that should actually do it. Now we can go into our view controller or into our main storyboard, maybe resize our label a little bit, put it in the somewhere in the center, change some attributes here, maybe center it, increase the size a little, and maybe also set it to see my bold and also make sure that we have the auto resizing mask set correctly so that our label is always centered. And then we bring up the assistant editor and control click and drag it to our view control. And I'm going to call this counting label. And then we go back to our view controller. And then so that we can also see what happens, I'm adding the view did appear function here and call super view did appear and pass along the animated argument. And then all we need to do is use our counting label and call the count function count from maybe from zero to 999 or 9,999. And then let's say five seconds with the animation type ease out and the counter type integer. And then we run this in the simulator and see if we successfully have created a counting label in less than 20 minutes. So here we are, see what happens and we're counting upwards and it slows down and it slows down more. And now let's see if we reverse that, we count from 999, uh, from 9,999 to zero, let's say duration of 10 seconds, again, ease out and maybe use float here. And let's see what happens then. So we are in the simulator, let's run this. And we start here, we have our floats, we're going down and we're nicely easing out here. So this was our counting label animation. I hope you find that useful for your own projects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.